morning, Doug. Happy Monday to you. Barb, Denise, good, good to see you this morning. My eyes are just not the best, so I, it's hard for me to read the little writing. Brenda, good morning. Hard for me to see who all's on, but uh, Jerry, good to see you this morning. Lots of, lots of people signing on. It's, it's a beautiful Monday. Uh, fall is in the air. Good morning, Thelma. Yosemite Lowry. Good morning. It's, uh, it is a beautiful morning, a beautiful week. I don't know if you've noticed the extended forecast, but uh, but in uh, a week, we're nighttime uh, temperatures are dipping below freezing, and so uh, it's pretty it's uh, approaching pretty quickly that colder weather. So uh, enjoy enjoy this week. It looks like it's going to be kind of all over from from low 80s down to 50s, but uh, but it's going to be a good week. Great, uh, great service yesterday. Good morning, Jerry, Susie. Um, it's, 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 uh, Josh gives us lots to chew on. And so here it is Monday morning and you got me. And, uh, I'm, I'm questioning whether uh, Monday morning devotional is really, uh, what you need. Um, I think what you need is to continue to chew on, uh, what Josh gives us on, on Sunday. I think uh, Monday we still should be having plenty to chew on um, from that message. So Monday devotionals are probably tapering down. Um, I'll keep you up to date on that, but uh, prepare yourself um, to have Mondays free to, to uh, re-watch Sunday's uh, sermon. Many times you, there are distractions in, at church and you can go back and listen to it again and, and glean a lot more. Uh, from it a lot more clarity um, the second time around so that may be coming but uh, not today so I posted a picture and I don't know how I'm not really good at Facebook I really don't know um, how that comes across so I, I posted a picture about five minutes ago and I don't know if you get notification if that comes up but uh, as we were uh, driving through some of the southern states uh, something we don't see up here are fields of uh, rice and fields of of cotton and uh pretty uh, pretty amazing uh the stark difference in in our fields up here and so when i when i you know when i read from from my cultural experience uh, my upbringing location especially when i read the fields are white with harvest you know, I think of wheat or, or, or something. I, 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 I don't picture it like, uh, like I do when I drive through the South and see a field of cotton that, uh, uh, when we went South, maybe the field wasn't even hardly noticeable. A week later, when we came back North, that field had ripened and the crop was white unto harvest. And, and it's a new, a new, of uh, vivid way of looking at that it brings that scripture uh, just uh, puts an exclamation mark I guess on my interpretation of that scripture when I when I drive through uh, the southern states and see a field that looks like uh, it's covered with popcorn I mean it's just it's just white and to harvest and and so many things I think in scripture are like that when we're not from that culture and don't understand uh, in the same way the disciples or the those listening uh, would have understood in that day uh, and so many times good Bible teachers will will bring that to light what that what that really meant in in 
in that culture at that day and uh, and it really changes uh, the impact it has on us as listeners and readers and so I think that this picture I hope you have a chance to see it um, I hope you have a chance to see just uh, how clear it is what that scripture would 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 have meant to people from a, from a region that were growing cotton or some like crop that would that would uh, appear so white when it's ready for harvest. So that's what I want to talk about just a little bit uh, this morning. You know, we're not guaranteed uh, tomorrow. Uh, we don't know how long uh, we have on this earth. We know this, uh, Josh mentioned yesterday, this life is a vapor. Um, we, there, are, there are just no guarantees. But yet what we do know is we're to be about our father's business just as Jesus was about his father's business. And in the in the scripture reference with that picture is John chapter four. And if you remember, Jesus was uh, with the woman at the well in, a, in an area that his disciples would not have been traveling through normally. He went a different way uh, that would would have been counterculture, and and went in an area that uh, a good Jewish uh, person wouldn't normally go. And he met with the woman at the well. And if you remember, the disciples then came and tried to get him to eat something. And he said, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me. And uh, he had no, no need or no desire for earthly food at that time. A and uh, when you're about your Father's business, when you're about anything, when you're about anything you're really passionate about, things like eating, uh, you know, kind of go by the wayside. If you're, if you love fishing and you're out fishing and catching fish, uh, just one of those phenomenal days where the fish are biting like crazy and you're having a blast. You're not thinking about stopping for lunch. You're thinking about continuing to ride this, this good, uh, fishing season while it, while it lasts. Um, think about anything you're passionate about when you're, when you're really engrossed in something, the things of this world pass away, the things of, of, uh, uh, our, our immediate desires and normal needs uh, are not evident, and and that's what that's what we need to focus on. I think so. So if we can do that, and and would it surprise you? Would it surprise you to hear me say as a pastor that I'm not always passionate about the lost? I live in this flesh as well, and and uh, many times my desires again go back to the things that that please the flesh. Um, whether it's eating, whether it's, whether it's hoarding, whether it's, whether it's, uh, whatever it is, it's being occupied with things that are not eternal. And, uh, that is not where we need to be. And Jesus was so clear on this. He said, uh, in Luke 10, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. And if you remember right, he sent them two by two out ahead of where he was going. And he said, I'm sending you as lambs unto wolves. Don't worry about taking a money bag. Don't worry about taking your knapsack. Don't worry about, about uh, taking sandals in hand. He said, basically just go. And, and that needs to be our passion. And I think we need to encourage one another and, and, um, and build each other up to want to do the good work of going and, and reaching the lost. Um, in, in back to John uh, chapter four, um, he talks about uh, the fields being white and the harvest. And he says, you know, I send you into the fields um, where you haven't labored, but I send you in to reap. There are those who before you who have labored, but I'm sending in you in to reap and you will receive a, a wage for reaping. And, uh, and gathering eternal for the fruit are eternal, he says. And so uh, we know that, we know that, but yet we need to be reminded and we need to encourage each other. It's really easy for us as believers uh, in this world to encourage each other in, in, in bad ways without even meaning to, but we, we encourage each other to, to think of things that are not eternal uh, just in our conversation. And, and I think Josh alluded to that yesterday with the prosperity me me message, uh, that whole focus on, on things um, where we are encouraged to worry about our health and wealth and, 
and well-being and setting up our future uh, on this earth. And uh, God's way is to remind us that our future is not on this earth, and he'll take care of what we need if we'll take care of uh, what he wants us to do uh, and following his will and to do his good work. And so I, I, I hope that, that we can be an encouragement to one another in, in this, in this um, stirring up a passion uh, for the lost. That's, that's why we're here. That's why we're here for our time. And like I said earlier, our time is, is not guaranteed. Uh, but while we have breath, let's be about his business and let's not uh, worry about so much about what we eat and, and what we drink and those things. And, and uh, you know, there's, there are so many people in our midst uh, that are dealing with so many things and, and uh, good things, bad things, just dealing with things. And there's a whole other message there uh, for, for another week. But uh, let's pray for those in our midst that are that are going through tough times, um, even even in their even in their uh, struggles and their doctor's visits and all that. I know uh, their heart is turned back to uh, being about their father's business, about how they can be a positive uh, influence on doctors and nurses and technicians and all those people that they come in contact with. Uh, at that, I, many of us, I know many of you watching have had diagnoses that, you know, are not, that are not good, that you've been in those places. So I think most of us have, many of us have, I would say, uh, of uncomfortable uh, diagnosis, things we have to deal with, things we have to think about, um, obviously different degrees, but many of us have been in those places and and uh and it's it, the mind does shift back to yes on one hand survival on one hand how do we deal with that but on, on a very real loud uh note how can we impact uh the world with what we have left and uh, i know that's the heart of, of those who are going through struggles now and and i, I would ask you to Join me in praying for these folks, for Bill and Brenda, uh, for Thelma, for for Mike, for Joe Tracy, for uh, AJ, um, for those who have lost loved ones and, and are struggling, for Larry and and uh, for Nancy and Rita who recently lost uh, family members. Um, and then we have we have a, a few that I want to. There are three sets of grandparents in our in our congregation that could have grandbabies today even, um, either due today or being induced today or those things. So the Slossons, the, the Clarks and the Wrights, uh, if you'd remember those families and, and their daughters uh, in your prayers, um, I know that would appreciate our, our daughter-in-laws, whatever the case may be, but uh, certainly uh, be with them as they're uh, at a whole different stage uh, looking at welcoming in a new life. God is good. God is good. He knows the days of our lives. He knows the numbers of hairs on our head. Um, some people, obviously, that's more difficult to, to imagine than others. But uh, he's for us. He's with us. He gives us so much, so much guidance. Um, as Josh preached yesterday, let's stick with what God wants us to do. Let's focus on that and not listen to these folks who, who say we should be wrapped up with all, all these, these other uh, things about uh, being wealthy and wise and, and whole and, and all the things that are nice but are not, uh, are not required. Jesus and Paul pretty much echoed what Jesus said. You know, I don't, the, food, the food is not the, the thing. My, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me. And I think our food is to do uh, the will of, of Jesus who commissioned us. And so I go with him. Let's encourage one another. Let's look for opportunities to encourage one another um, in the things of the Lord and in reaching the lost. There are many opportunities as we did our prayer walk last night. There are many opportunities in our community as we thought about the agencies and the businesses and all the things and even the people driving by and walking by. There, there are so many opportunities. Let's pray for one another that our passion would be ignited and it would be uh, burning in us so that the things of this world would not demand our attention, uh, but our attention would be given to doing the will of the Father. So 
Thanks for listening and putting up with me. Uh, go back and listen to that sermon again. Uh, uh, we're blessed. We're blessed to have uh, uh, Josh preaching uh, without, uh, without distraction or apology, uh, the Word of God for us. And so, so it's a great series that he's in the middle of, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to next week. So God bless you. Enjoy this week, and uh, build somebody up today. Let me pray for you. Father. We need you so desperately, Lord. We need you. We are so, uh, so distractible, Lord. Uh, so many things vying for our attention. Uh, we need your Holy Spirit. And I pray for these folks that are listening, Lord, that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit on them, Lord, that their passion would be for you and for, for the lost. I know that's your passion for the lost. You have a passion for the children. There are so many things, Lord, um, for us to be passionate about and so many things in front of us uh, for us to be passionate about, but, but to do your will. May that be our number one passion, Lord. May that override all the other things that would that would pull at us, Lord. So guide us by your Spirit. Fill us with your Spirit. Use us, Lord. Be with those that I mentioned that are hurting and those who I forgot, Lord. That, uh, you know them all, Lord. I just pray that you would minister to our people, uh, that they might minister to others uh, with whatever time there is, Lord. Uh, we know that our future is in your hands and our, our home is not here. But while we're here, Lord, use us uh, until you use us up and then take us home. To you be the glory. Our future is wonderful thanks to you. We are so thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a, have a great week.